Well, hello. I want to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. Uh, this week, you'll see some from before, uh, some first impressions, and it is time for another unveiling of a Platinum 3776, which is kind of interesting because SR, SBRE Brown just released a video where he compared a number of different nib sizes of the Platinum 3776. You probably know that I'm working on that series myself um, several months in advance yet, uh, but I do not have the ultra extra fine or the extra fine that he demonstrated, but I have the medium flexible that he does not, or no, soft medium that he does, did not have. So we each had something the other didn't. So let's dive into it and take a look at the pens. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. If you'd like to talk about any of these pens, the Platinum 3776, or uh, I want to talk a little bit about Pen BBS nibs, feel free to leave a comment down below. So let's take a look at the pens. Uh, the pens I have this week are Viscante Homo Sapiens, I have the Omos Ojiva, I have a Keiko Edge Aurora 88 Vintage, Aurora 88 Modern, I have a Well Sharp, which is a night what was it? 1930s? 19... I forget. Probably 1930s. That's sounding right. Uh, glass nib pen. A pen BBS 308 slash 266, which I just introduced this week in my first impressions series. Uh, and finally, the Platinum 3776 in the Levand finish. So let's see how they write. I have my notebook upside down. <laughs> As always, this will be in the Bomo Art Journal, the Seafood Flavored Edition. So let's take a look. Uh, so today is the 30th, 30th of November, and I would just suggest to any of you who are looking at pen reviewing and uh, or any other kind of videoing and wondering about free time, your friend is batch filming. So I do this one weekly. Everything else is batch filmed. I'll be filming a couple videos tonight. Probably wearing the same shirt because I didn't bring any others down. Uh, so 30th of November. This is a Visconti Homo Sapiens. Very, very attractive pen. Uh, supposedly made with uh, Mount Etna volcanic rock. I've mentioned before that I the finial disappeared because my, my pen system failed. So I glued in a tiger's eye because they're pretty. Uh, this is one of those pens that sometimes gets critiqued for writing issues. I have not had any. I have had issues with it, but the writing is glorious. It is everything I hoped it would be when I bought the pen and more. Uh, but I can only report on the pen I have and so can everybody else. The ink in it is a brand that I've grown quite interested in. Califolio Incasol. Uh, it's a brand that's supposedly fairly vintage friendly. So, interestingly, a palladium nib rather than gold or silver or stainless steel or well, silver, no, gold or stainless steel or titanium. It's kind of its own deal. And that interesting hook system for closing. Uh, the biggest fault I've ever had with this pen, other than my pen system being a fail, is uh, when I would carry it around with me, sometimes I would come back to it and I would have a whole cap full of ink. Ew. But, since I've let this live a more sedentary life at home, it's been a good pen. And I have pens like that. Here's another one. Omas Ojiva. Uh, this one is... I purchased it back when Omas was still a going concern, or maybe at the very end. Uh, but anyway, you'll pay about double what I paid for this, at least, <laughs> if you want one. So I'm very happy with it. I have a medium extra flexibile nib. I wanted at the time a fine extra flexibile nib, but I didn't get one. And now I'm not going to pay that much for one. I like the pen, but not that much.
Uh, one thing I noticed is the last time I used it, although it doesn't show up as well on video I discovered, um, the ink has a distinctly greenish, greenish cast. Uh, so I have the feeling that the last time I used it, I didn't do as good a job cleaning it out as I should have. Which is fine. It actually makes this ink kind of interesting. Omos Gray isn't particularly amazing. And I, and I should add, when I say that, I mean it doesn't show up terribly well uh, unless the pen is wet enough to give it some shading just very pale. This is my Keiko Edge. Uh, my Lamy 2000 emptied out. I didn't have more ink with me, so I whipped this out instead and decided to give the... I always clean the Lamy 2000 out over Christmas break. I decided to clean it out early. Use this pen as my daily writer, and then uh, failing that, I knew after this runs out that Platinum 3776 is a fine nib, so hopefully it should get me through to Christmas. So this, is, of course, is the Keiko Edge. Lamy 2000-esque pen. Uh, this was a, is an extra fine. And the ink in it is just the cartridge that came with the pen. Keiko Black, we'll call it. Not bad, it's just, you know, I, I'm, I'm missing my Lamy 2000, but this really is not a bad pen. I like it. I just like the Lamy 2000 better. And uh, as some people pointed out my last, was it last week? Whatever week I did my first impression. I find here on the grip section, just because of the texturing and this bit's metal, it's a bit slippery. I don't care for that. Um, it's not like some people were describing where their fingers are just like, whoop, and they're off the pen, but definitely not my favorite. But one of those things I think I could live with. Another pen, which could easily become a daily writer if something happens to the Lamy 2000. I love the vintage Aurora 88. In fact, on Instagram, you're going to see a video. It's going to have to happen. It's going to be uploaded late tonight, uh, but because I will be at a girls' basketball game after school, so I can't upload this video until I get home from that because Instagram doesn't let me schedule. But I will be talking several different... Aurora 88s, and I don't mean the video that's on YouTube. I mean I have some vin two vintage ones and a uh, takeoff on the vintage as well as the modern one. So this is an Aurora 88. Uh, the ink in it is Califolio. I'll just tell you briefly I was inspired to make this video because of that. And a viewer asked me, well, how do you know what that means? And I gave him a website and I thought, wait a second. The other vintage one that's going to be in that video, or that I own, this is what inspired the video, has that on the piston turning knob which I can't find what color it is, but it definitely points me in a very different direction from what I expected. So look for me to address that late tonight on Instagram. But hey, I'm not recording this late Friday night, so whatever. Okay, oops, I uncapped it before I even told you what the next pen is. Uh, sorry. Aurora 88, the modern version. Is it a vintage Aurora 88? No. Do I like it as well as the vintage Aurora 88? Okay, that's not fair. That's like saying, who's your favorite kid? Uh, let's just say this inhabits a different place in my heart from the vintage Aurora 88. Uh, this has the flex nib in it. And uh, the ink in it is Pelican Edelstein Olivine. Oh, that was an ugly tea. Which it turns out I like that ink a lot more than I thought I would. 
I have not used this well sharp very much this week. It's a lever fill pen, 1930s. Very pretty. Celluloid. I was just talking about celluloid with uh, some of my students today and about how flammable certain types of celluloid are. Uh, no, we're not going to test it on this pen. But anyway, glass nib, which is always interesting. I'm not a particular fan of glass nibs, but I think for the novelty it's worth having one or two in your collection. That is really dark writing. Uh, the ink in it is Jibon. At least I hope I got the brand right. Yep, I did. Possier de Lune. Uh, there were some questions about smoothing it and resizing it and so on. Uh, I have not tried this myself, but one of the commenters, who's uh, fairly knowledgeable about fountain pens, uh, Chris Rep 52 suggested that you can use very fine sandpaper to do that. I would just add, if you want to do that, be super careful and know what you're doing, and maybe try it out on a pen that's not so one of a kind as this one. So I have two special features tonight. The one was my uh, great unboxing this week. This is a Pen BBS two, well, 308 slash 266. And I remarked on a couple things about it, but let me dip my writing sample. What ink is in it? Oh, Private Reserve Avocado. which is a wonderful color. So for my first special feature, when I did my uh, first impression of it, and you know, when I do first impressions, they're not necessarily well researched. I remarked that it's scratchy, and you may have noticed me rotating it actually slightly this direction, rather than straight on or in this direction. It's because I have found it smoother there. Uh, it's been suggested to me that possibly the tines are misaligned, I uh, will just show you. Now, my eye isn't the best, but they don't seem like it. Possibly a little. So one of the things you can do if they're misaligned, I know it's out of focus, is just push on it slightly. Um, th there's more you can do, but I'm just curious. I, I saved this since filming it to show you. Uh, it didn't look misaligned, but who knows? Okay, I hate to say it, but they may have been right. Maybe they're more misaligned than they looked. I'm gonna just push on that a little bit more. Uh, again, you're not trying to bend it, you're just trying to make a tiny adjustment. Okay, I will say that that did improve it. Uh, I will say I still don't like it. And I will say this. Possibly when I edit this film, I'll see it better. I don't have a loop. I was just using a magnifying glass. Uh, it is easily possible I do need a loop to analyze how well aligned these tines are. Uh, which is one of those purchases I've been thinking about for a while. This may be what pushes me over the edge. But there is another reason I wanted to do this. I don't remember when, but I recently did a first impression. Oops, show you the pen first. Did a first impressions on this pen. And I was writing great guns with it until uh, I unveiled this one. Then it's kind of been sitting there. And the unveiling, well, I wrote with them both the same week, and then I've been playing with them. But. One of the things I noticed, which is what made me finally release them, even though they were the same model. So, let's see, so you know which one's which, the Hawaiian and the not Hawaiian. Same size nib, and I don't know if it's related to the scratchiness at all, but the Hawaiian one is definitely more bent back than the other. 
and I don't know if that's a feature or a bug. It's an is. Um, so I'll have to, I don't know, I'm going to have to look at this pen under a loop, and I'm going to have to also possibly try some nib smoothing if the loop thing doesn't reveal anything further. My last pen is Platinum 3776 Levand. Now in my intro, I mentioned that uh, Stephen Brown did a video where he looked at all the nib sizes. This is one of the nib sizes he looked at. This is a fine. Uh, Platinum was kind enough to send him a sampler set, so jealous. Um, he did not have a, me uh, a soft medium, which I do have. Uh, he did not have a soft broad, which until he made that video I didn't even know was a thing. Uh, but I do not have the extra fine or the ultra extra fine, so he's got two over on me. But anyway, this is a fine, and this has been sitting on my uh, in my pen case since well, May, I believe, May of 2018. And we're about to see how it writes. Uh, I am in the process, after I get all of these sampled and tried out, of doing a similar video to what he did, where I compare the nib sizes, but I go one further and I will look at um, the slip and seal mechanism, which is up here, and is supposed to, according to Platinum, keep the nib writing for up to two years. I don't know. I don't want to test it for that long, but I thought this was worth looking at. Unfortunately, those who've been following my channel know that I had a hard drive failure. I had uh, my reviews. I'd used to keep them on an external hard drive. Learned my lesson um, that the external hard drive is no longer what I'm using. Now I am using um, Dropbox and an external hard drive. Uh, Dropbox has a nice feature where I can just have the the I'm talking while I'm looking at pages here, trying to find the right page because I didn't bookmark it like a fool. Uh, Dropbox has a nice feature that uh, you can have it just stored in the cloud and not on the computer. Of course, you're trusting that they will still be there. So there is that to consider. Um, but I've been fairly happy with Dropbox. I have used it for a long time, so not too worried. So even though this is a... November 30th pens in use. I am actually filming this on November 28th because that's how I roll. Remember I mentioned batch filming? I knew I was going to make this remark when I said that. Boom! Did you see that? Start it up like a champ. Didn't leave me enough room though. I <laughs> write the full date. But anyway, Last wrote with it May 7th, 2018. It was still last school year. And now in the new school year, November 28th, 2018, it's writing again. One thing I'm thinking about um, might be a test worth doing. I just have to decide if I want to leave one of these not writing, although here's a candidate. Um, see how this does after two years. Uh, but I'm going to have to refilm all of this and somehow integrate this with this, because I am not restarting this test, because it's been sad not being able to use these wonderful pens. So, one of those first world issues that I need to solve, but not your problem. <laughs> so, you got to see a little nib straightening. I Hopefully nobody cringed too much. And just for the record, let's get this uh, platinum in here. Um, my hope is that after the Keiko edge runs dry, this can get me the rest of the way through the school year. So those are the pens that I have in use this week. For once, finally, after many weeks, no stipula in sight. Stipula is taking a short break while I wash it out and uh, investigate other options, let's say. Uh, in the meantime, if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, 
Maybe you'd like to talk about my Platinum 3776 experiment, or is it a good idea to use Dropbox? Or the Pen BBS with the same nib, yet they look different. Or my nib straightening exercise. And yes, now I'm thinking, you know, I was thinking of magnifying glasses enough. Now I'm thinking after that little nib straightening experiment, maybe it is time to look at a loop. So uh, tell me what you think. This is uh, part of the fun as we get to interact at least a little bit. So I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.